I don't know if anyone watched the preview for episode 19 of To Your Eternity, but that episode looks rather spicy. Though I do question if it's gonna go as predictable as they're making it, because there's something about, and I know some people don't like it when I talk about the previews, if you don't want to skip 30 seconds, but I think it's fair game when the previews attach to the episode that you're watching. Because sometimes anime, you have to go to a YouTube channel to find the preview. Here, to your eternity, they slap that baby right after the credit. So, I think it's fair game, but just warning. It shows Tanari like, pulling Hayase into, like, a volcano or some sort of, like, very fiery death trap. But I feel like both of those characters, at least in that situation, will probably get out of that unscathed. Just because Hayase feels like the character you can't kill. There's something about her personality that feels like there's no way she can die. So I think if Tanari's like throwing her in that situation and Fushi can only save one, there's no way he would save Hayase, right? So I think they're both probably gonna be okay in some way, but I guess we'll see. But I mean, for a zombie outbreak of Knockers, it definitely lived up to last week's preview. It was brutal. It was the simplest in a certain sense because you could literally use a sword to kill them. It wasn't like, you know, we had the bear knocker, right? And you literally had to explode its shell in order to find the core. But because there's so many of them, and because there's a mountain of corpses, I mean, the grave robbery is without a doubt the most brutal I've seen in anime, because you're literally taking ruthless killers and people and just turning them into absolute savages. And this episode blew me away. With two episodes left to go, you would think that next week won't be the end of this arc, but at the same time, I could see it being the end, with episode 20 being like the epilogue. But I'm curious to see how many of these characters will get out of alive, because, I mean, this episode was without a doubt similar to that of when we had Gugu's arc, and he was seemingly dying in the tent, if everyone remember that thought, right? You know, he's looking like he's giving a farewell speech to Fushi, and then he just actually goes to sleep. This episode was giving a familiar vibe to that of Tanari, but then she seemingly got out of it okay, but next week is the foreshadowing. That has to be your death, but it's hard to say, right? Because most of them probably will. I mean, right now it seems like Tanari has one other with her other than Fushi. So, really, everyone else has died. We had the first, which was pretty tragic. I think she was probably the first one I liked out of the group immediately. And to see her just, like, become one of them and then in return kill the older girl, it was pretty bad. I mean, it was sad. It was something that you didn't want to see. And the fact that Fushi feels so helpless afterwards, I mean, he can make needles, he can make weapons, but he can't heal people, right? And the fact that he admits that he's never been able to save people, you know, it's hard because last time when they fought the Knockers, because he had teamwork is the reason he survived. So the fact that he put trust into teamwork and seemingly it got people killed, yeah, it's something that's gonna really haunt him. And he ended up losing a form because he just couldn't put someone out of their misery. And I'm sure there's going to be some people saying Fushi was a wimp or this or that, but I mean, even if it was someone who was dead, I mean, looking at someone who you care about so much, he wouldn't have been able to do that to March, he wouldn't have been able to do that to Gugu. Even if maybe these characters aren't necessarily the most connected he's been to anyone, there's still a connection that he doesn't want to have to do that. And if it wasn't for a big man in charge telling him to turn into something small and throwing him to basically safety, Fushi would have lost there. And it will be interesting because do I think Fushi's going to die here? No, the story's ongoing in the manga. We're not going to switch perspectives. But who will make it out alive? And honestly, Tanari, Haisei, and Fushi seem like the likely bet right now. But it would be interesting to see if Someone like Tanari ended up surviving here, similar to that of, say, in the previous arc. I mean, obviously Gugu went down, but his love interest was still alive and kicking, right? So there's different ways to end arcs, because even though Fushi will outlive everyone, it doesn't mean that because we're at the end of an arc, everyone dies guaranteed. Old Grandma still alive and kicking, I mean, Boozman seemingly still alive and kicking. There's been lots of characters who have survived past their initial arc and then died eventually after, or will die eventually after, right? I mean, just look at, you know, the new form we got in this arc. She died off screen, but she survived initially past it, right? So it'll be interesting. Though I have seen the theories float around, and I've seen it for a while, but I think it's a more common theory these days, is like, what if Fushi can revive people? And I think, had you made that theory, which I think I've seen one person or a couple of people throughout the weeks before... Fushi was able to make bodies, I was like, this just doesn't seem likely. And there's a good argument, I think, to be made, because seemingly souls stay with him. Or is that just his conscience? We don't really know for sure yet. But the idea that if Fushi can somehow take the souls that stick with him, so basically, that's a good argument as to why he can transform into people, that they don't go into the afterlife or things like that, they stick by Fushi, which is why he can take their form. So the fact that when Fushi escaped Hayase, right, 
he made a default body of himself and he turned into the mole and escaped and got the jump on her, as we saw last week. If Ushi can create bodies and put souls into it, while he would probably lose their form, he could probably revive people. The biggest question I have with that theory is two things. One, if that does happen, either it's going to be a late game thing towards the end of the show, or end of the manga I should say, or B, if he does it early on, there has to be a penalty to that. Either A, he loses all of his skills, like he loses forms, which would be a pretty big hindrance, or maybe it costs him his immortality. Like, what if him putting a soul back into a body costs him a hundred years of his immortality, right? What if his immortality is a lifespan of 10,000 years, right? I mean, if something like, you know, putting a soul back into a body costs him a hundred years, you could see how that counter could go down sooner than later, right? So there's definitely ways to make a reviving angle not pointless. I mean, the most recent example I can think of was that time I got reincarnated as a slime in Season 2. I won't spoil it in that nature in terms of the way they cover their tracks, a one-time thing sort of a deal. So I could see To Your Eternity being able to do it without making it pointless. But I feel like I would put more money on that being an endgame thing than something that gets implemented anytime soon. But should they do it either next week or in the last episode of Season 1, I think there's going to be a penalty of some sort. I just don't see how they could just say, well, now anyone who dies, he can just revive without some sort of hindrance. Please, no spoilers. It's just fun spec lane. That's what I like about shows like To Your Journey. But it is fun to think about, and I've seen a lot more people talk about over the weeks, and I don't believe I've ever talked about that in those videos. So, I mean, after doing 18 of them, I think it's about time, especially considering that we're almost done the anime, at least for Season 1. One of the more powerful moments of this episode before shit hit the fan was definitely Tanari admitting that she believes that her father killed the mother. Though, it's interesting because the argument she has is that when she looked at her father, he was laughing, he was a maniac, and she saw that person being someone who could have killed a mother. I think it's very likely he did kill the mother, but I don't think it was done for, like, maniac reasons. And this is all just gut reactions. I think probably something happened, maybe it was an accident, maybe he just did it because he was fed up. That's entirely possible. But the reason of him laughing, I think most people probably would have a similar reaction should they manage to survive a killing tournament. Because you enter that, you're probably thinking you're dying or going to lose a limb. He came out of that literally surviving, you're laughing for your life. I mean, some people laugh in the face of tragedy because they don't know what else to do, right? So it is a human thing. But I like the fact that, I mean, she does fully admit. I mean, I caught on to it, but I know some people didn't catch on to the fact of like, hey, she was digging through the corpses. Why did she do that? She knew her father was the victor. Well, she didn't want to admit that was her father because to her, that was a monster, not her father. So it was nice to see that she admitted to that. And then, you know, someone like Fushi trying to counter that saying, giving like explanations and reasonings on how killing the mother and killing someone in the tournament could have been two very different things. And she's basically just saying like, I'm already over it. So I'm going to deal with it kind of a thing. I mean, Tanari definitely definitely has romantic feelings towards Fushi and it would be interesting if she survived this arg and Fushi and her actually did have some sort of a connection because they definitely had the worst connection from the get-go but at the same time Fushi's not currently the character who wants romance he wants to survive and really at this point it feels like this is an arc that's going to push him away from wanting to cooperate again but I am glad that he's starting to connect with the maker a bit more even you know Tanari herself is saying what is he, a god? And he's saying, no, he's not a god, he's not my parent. Well, then is he a demon? Are the knockers gods, like, or agents of god trying to do it? Because the idea of creating something to preserve humanity is a pretty noble idea, and he's basically pure logic. And, I mean, even Fushi admits the mistake in the, the first time the knockers attacked this island. The maker did tell him, it's just he didn't believe it, or he kind of got caught off guard by it. I mean, I remember when I was watching that, when basically the crowd was swarming Fushi, and then the knockers attacked, I thought what he was warning about was actually the crowd. So it's easy to see how Fushi missed the mark there. But he took his advice this time, and was able to get the jump on the knockers, just other circumstances kind of caught him off guard. I think their relationship is definitely a very slow and steady pace. They're probably never going to be best friends, but I like the Fushi starting to take his advice to heart and is causing, honestly, better circumstances to take hold, even if he's not perfect yet. He's still basically an infant in the world of being an immortal. So it'll be fun to see where they take it from here, but an amazing episode, emotional episode, and excited and terrified for more. Let me know your thoughts and feelings. Definitely those series down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.